thousand, <laughs> twelve thousand one hundred eighty-four. Now I'm going to talk about communication in small groups. The topic of my speaking club, which is going to take place on Saturday, and also on Saturday there is a lecture, which I am deliver before the speaking club. But lecture is all already done. I know how to do that. So there's, of course, I can improve it. I can talk about it and see what else can I add to that. But now it's out of <laughs> my purpose. I want to talk more about speaking club. Speaking club uh, communication in small groups. Yesterday I already started this topic and I tried to say something about it. But I noticed that at the end of the day I forget about it completely. I forgot yeah, because uh, there was a time which I could use to discover this topic in the internet. I had a few hours and I forget about it. I know that I could type some questions like what is a small group, how to communicate more effectively in a small group, how to organize this group, uh, what to do, what pay attention to etc etc but instead of that I forget about this task now probably it's useful just to uh, remind myself that it's a task and I have to <laughs> co cover it uh, at least I have to think about it maybe a few hours before I really go to the speaking club and introduce it as a topic well, uh, communication in small groups. Again, the main point is that there's few types of motivation, like uh, competition and cooperation, collaboration. So, and when we need to improve, let's say, our performance in a group, we can identify how participants of the group are motivated. So, if they're motivated to compete with each other, it's better to create some sort of competitive tasks. And if they are more likely to collaborate and to solve some problems or whatever it may be, it's better to set such tasks which can help to make collaboration more productive, etc. So, but usually there is, of course, more uh, motivations for people to get together in a small group, not just compete or collaborate on something. There's seven types of motivation, such as uh, some basic needs, um, what else, like affiliate motivation, uh, dominance we can uh, put in this category of competition, competition, what else, okay, I just need to Watch it again, watch it, not see what, read, read, take a book and read it again in order to understand better all these things. Well, uh, that's what I'm going to do at the evening, but now I still have to talk something about communication in small groups. In my experience, I've noticed that I, first of all, I don't like to talk in small groups and it was from my childhood. I, I've noticed that I like to talk with people uh, one, one and one when there's only this, there, when there's a dial and you can talk to someone or listen to someone, and that's the kind of communication I like. And also, I like to be a participant in a uh, big uh, in a communication between a speaker and the audience, and I. <laughs> I like to be in, in, in the audience and I like to be a speaker. So it's like two types of uh, communications which I uh, prefer rather than communication in a small group. And a small group for me is some sort of uh, unknown. <laughs> of course, I know, uh, now, by now I know a lot, a lot, a lot. Today I train this sound, ah, ah, like after, after to drop the jaw <laughs> and uh, to, uh, 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 etc. 
extremely uh, hard sound for me because I already uh, use some version of Russian A. Ah, A, ah, A, ah, A, ah, A, ah, A, ah, A, ah, A. But still it's the same A ah, in the Russian and English. In the Russian we don't emphasize it so much. But come back to the communication in small groups. Well, yeah. First of all, there should be some sort of task and also there should be some sort of activity which can uh, help the member of the group to uh, satisfy their needs uh, while they come to the group. So it's better to learn why people come to speaking club, let's say that. They come 